key signatures can make our life so easy and so difficult. How they help is that instead of having to write each individual sharp or each individual flat that we use on each note, we group them all at the beginning of each line and that group applies to every use of that note for the whole line. The difficult thing is learning how to write a key signature in exactly the correct order because it's very prescribed. In order for something to work as a key signature, it's got to be the right number of sharps or flats, the right note names that are sharpened or flattened, and even the right octave that is used to actually write them on the paper. So how do we remember? Well, first, let's just deal with what sharps or flats we use in what order. And a very common way to remember the order in which the flats are written is spelling the word bead and then adding something like gorillas can't fly. Bead, gorillas can't fly. Now the first letter B actually looks a bit like the flat symbol because the flat symbol looks like a lowercase b. So that can tell us, read from this end and read this way. Bead, GCF. Now, a great thing about the sharps in relation to the flats is that the order of sharps is exactly the mirror image. So if we know to read flats this way from the left-hand side, we're going to read sharps this way from the right-hand side. F sharp, C sharp, G sharp, D sharp, A sharp, E sharp, B sharp. Let's now take this and figure out how to write a correct key signature on the manuscript lines. We'll start with the flats, B, G, C, F. Here we go. We should see from left to right B, E, A, D, G, C and F. So if we were in the key of C flat major, we would use seven flats and we'd have to write the key signature with all seven flats in that order. What visually does that look like? Well, I reckon it looks a bit like a number of letter M's all joined together. We start on the B, we go up to the E, down to the A, up to the D, down to the G, up to the C, down to the F. And do you see how it slopes down? Mm. So it sounds a bit like the sound we make when we eat something delicious or hear something great. Mm. That's delicious. I love the flats. And that might help us remember where to write things. B flat, up to E flat, mm, but further down to A flat. Up to D flat, but further down to G flat. Up to C flat, but further down to F flat. So let's have a look at how it works with the sharps. We've got F sharp, down to C sharp, up to G, down to D sharp, down to A sharp, up to E sharp, and ending in B sharp. I've decided to divide this up into two triangle shapes, and then a final sharp. So let's have a look. We've got an F sharp, down to C sharp, then up to G. And do you notice the triangle works a little bit like a tick in terms of the second of the two lines is the longer one. And then we're going to repeat that shape starting on a D sharp. So we go D sharp, down to A sharp, up to E sharp. And that is our six sharps. And we only need to remember one right in the middle, that B sharp where I've got X marks the spot. So if we were to think of this in alpha terms, we could say VVB. So if we learn the visual and alpha for our key signatures, the sharps are VVB and the flats are mmm. The sharps end right in the middle, the flats begin right in the middle. Hopefully that helps us when we're arranging these notes going this way for the flats, B flat, E flat, A flat, D flat, G flat, C flat, F flat, or this way for the sharps going F sharp, C sharp, G sharp, D sharp, A sharp, E sharp, B sharp.